Hey, okay, I'll get started. Hey, there's three guys picking, right? Oh, sorry. I think she might have got a little offended, you know. But what it was, was uh, I walk into this bar, right, in Chicago, and uh, I saw Bush and Cheney in there. And uh, I thought I did anyway, so I go to the bartender, I said, is that Bush and Cheney sitting over there? And he said, yeah, as a matter of fact, it is. I said, well, I gotta walk over there. So I walked over and I said, excuse me, I said, it's not every day you see the president and vice president in here. It's about, don't, no bother, come over here. You know what? I want your opinion anyway, Bush says to me. And I said, okay, what is it? He goes, well, we're plotting the next world war, and we figure we kill two million Muslims and one blonde with big tits. And I said, why one blonde with big tits? He looks over and he goes, see, I told you nobody cares about the Muslims. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I told the girl, and she didn't think it was funny. So <laughs> I thought it was funny. <laughs> I think it's funny. All right, good. Good. Just getting started. We're just getting started with a new episode three. of Three Guys and Picking. Yeah. This is a brand new episode, as yeah. you can see. We're wearing different shirts from the last one, and this is actually a different backdrop than the last one. It may look the same, yeah. but it's really not. The it's, other one, I think, this different. was like kind of almost like that. Yeah, it's and completely then different. Pushed it back that time. So, anyway, so yeah. I'm your host Tyler of the show Three Guys Picking. With me, as always, is Brody. That's me. We are the most electrifying cable access show in Chicago. Y todo el mundo. And we have a very special guest for you here. Muy especial. Today. Uh, aquí. Drummer extraordinaire. Ricky Rocket. Martial artist. Hairdresser. That was a long time ago, dude. Oh, my bad. Yeah. I meant it as a compliment. Well, it's a cool thing. From the band Poison, we have Ricky Rocket. Ricky Rocket. Us here with us. <laughs> anyway, great guy. Yeah, he's a cool guy. Yeah, I mean, you know, we've had Brett. We had Brett. And we've CC, had Brett before. We've had CC. And Ricky. And it's like, you know, I, I keep, I don't want to keep saying the same things, but I just, I can't keep saying it enough. You know, really cool guys. Cool guys. They write good, fun music. You fun know? music. I'm so tired of, you know, all these other people that are like, oh, what is up? You know, they look like they're so much in pain just to be up there. And it's like, screw that. You know, it's nice. Enjoy the having, spotlight. Having fun, singing about nothing but a good time. Have fun having people watch you play and perform the things that you love to perform and play. Perform? Perform. Jackass. 
And here it is, 20-something years later. 20 and years later. They've been, when people say hair bands, boom, poison. But here they are, 20 years later, still packing in outdoor arenas. Uh, where are all the other guys? Gone, gone, gone. Working at a McDonald's or busting into other people's interviews. <laughs> Don Duncan. Don Duncan. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. anyway. Jinx, you want to make coke? So, Check out... Uh, First part of our uh, well, actually, Ricky well, Rocket. Not, we got see it? somebody ran off with the mouth here, and uh, we still have one more thing to that's, cover that's in this segment. Bit. There's a uh, there's two songs on the Poison album Hollyweird. Hollyweird. It was uh, the one that came out before their covers album. That's right. Poisoned. One is Home Brett's story. And one is Home Cece's story. And that's what we were playing at the beginning of this segment. <laughs> So there's home Brett story, home yeah, CC so story. Yeah, so we're like, okay, there's a Brett and a CC story. Where's the Ricky Bobby story? Yeah, because Ricky and, and Bobby the bass player. I mean, they could even call it the ballad of Ricky Bobby. Shrink and break. <laughs> oh, we are so funny to ourselves. It's not <laughs> even funny. Actually, it is funny. <laughs> it is funny that we're so funny. There was a movie with um, Will Ferrell called... This is, this is going way Yes, longer. I know it's going way longer. Well... Shut up. Yep. Proceed. Proceed. Anyway, it's called Tell It Dig at Nights, the Ricky Bobby story. And we thought that'd be great comedy if it's Ricky fucking Bobby. You know, see how we worked that in? But um, apparently only we thought it's funny. Ricky didn't think it was funny. Well, I, not that he didn't think it was funny. I just, you know, I don't, nobody we told it to has really got it. I mean, nobody really saw that movie, so it's not really their fault they didn't get yeah, it. Yeah, it's number one movie in the country. For what, an hour? Dude, lots of people saw it. Oh, well, anyway. The whole baby Jesus thing. We're having to explain. Brown baby Jesus. Help me, Tom Cruise. Help me, Oprah Winfrey. When you have to explain the joke. Help me, three guys. Funny, funny, Frank. Not funny. Who's Frank? Anyway, Ricky Rocket. I'll check you back out in a bit. You want Chicago? Right here, man. Hey, three guys picking back again with another uh, special, special guest. We have uh, the drummer from the rock band Poison with us, Mr. Ricky Rocket. Ricky, welcome to Three Guys Picking. Thank you very much. Thanks for uh, taking the time. Right on. Sit down with us. Uh, just want to start off real quick. Um, you know, you guys have been, been touring pretty steadily the last 20 years or so. so you know, yeah. You guys have you know come on the scene. And um, a lot of music critics in the, the music industry in general sometimes talks down or talks bad about hair bands and hair metal and yet here you guys still are yeah 20 years filling out stadiums and selling yeah. up I mean, what do you what do you think about that you well think? you know what i was just reading something about that i was just hey i was just <laughs> i was just reading uh the, the onion happens to be one of my favorite papers and there, you know, that was playing, and it has a thing about it. And of course, it's like, oh, well, hair metal went away, and it refuses to go down, and blah blah blah, and you know, all the normal. I gotta say, for everything they accuse of, us of, you know, all the sort of typical, um, what would you say? What's the word? I'm not lost for words today. The, you know, the, the typical trappings. They use the same crap in their lingo when they're when they're describing us you know what i mean they don't it's like why don't they find another target because it's boring already it's you know what i mean target for it's it is it's like there's other stuff that's really goofy if you think about it. there's some other artists who really think there's something else and you know what i mean and and uh and, and they really deserve to have their balls busted you know so I just think it's getting old with us, you know what I mean? And the fact of the matter is we are still here. And so, you know, it's kind of the jokes on them. I don't know where any of those critics are, but I know where we are, you know? So there you go. Well, unfortunately, a couple of those critics are in Chicago. So sometimes we got to deal with them. Chicago radio just isn't, it's not that fun. It's not that good. And they just... Well, radio is becoming less and less important, I hate to say, because of the internet. You know, people are getting their music a different way. They're getting, you know, they don't, there isn't just one avenue. It's not to say that it's completely irrelevant, but it's getting there, you know, at least the way we used to get it, you know. So I think a lot, I mean, there's a lot of people that are out of jobs now that were, it did have jobs in radio. And they're just, uh, so it'll, you know, it's just a matter of time, you know. Oh, this is what I need. I need everyone. Get your helping hands. Come on. 
Your guys' uh, album, Holly Weird, which came out quite a few years ago, um, had a song, two versions of song on Home by one right. Brett, Brett's story, one CC's, uh, CC's story. Where's the Ricky Bobby story? I mean, I mean we could even call it, you know, the Ballad of Ricky Bobby or something. Ricky Bobby, that would have been good. I, I know, that would have been good. In fact, we should go back and write that. So that's a good I, idea I'd, I'd for okay the next for the next that. record. We'll do the Ricky Bobby story. <laughs> so I think yeah, thank fun. you, I thank you for that. Yeah. You're looking at the album, it's like, all right, Brett, CC, Ricky yeah. Bobby, what the heck, that's man? That's right, that's right. <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> and on the, uh, on the I feel like I have to follow you. <laughs> You're like the Mona Lisa of cameras. <laughs> He's, he's got shaky cam disease. He can't, he can't keep it still. But that's that's why we love him. That's why he's behind the camera. Oh yeah. You see how steady I am? Look, there's my shooting hand. And speaking of being steady, I mean those hands are, are pretty wild when you play. You've got a pretty unique drumming style. You know, as far as you know, the twirls and it's not just the usual finger twirls. I mean, you're going upside down over the back of your head. I don't even know what the heck you're doing sometimes. How long is it taking you to kind of craft the way that you play, and are you always looking to, to change it up, or just? I'm all, I am. I look at stuff. I I haven't in the last couple of years so much. I've kind of just sort of stuck with what what's been working. It just evolved over time, you know, and um, it just one thing led to another. I try something or see somebody try something. There's some guys doing some stuff now that's just over the top too, you know, and a lot of that showmanship's coming back and um, there's some guys that are going to be making me look pretty lame, you know, in the next couple of years. So I bet, I guess I better keep up with it. You know. Hey, you can always come up with something new. Yeah. <laughs> there's always something new that nobody else has done before. Well, there's a guy named Chip Ritter and uh, he's in Arizona and he's phenomenal. He's a phenomenal, he, he can juggle while he's playing. <laughs> Seriously, he juggles three sticks and plays and keeps a groove. Wow. You know? Now, I don't know whether he can do it during a song, <laughs> but, uh, but there's a lot he can do during a song. And uh, I'm adjusting my nose ring, by the way, not picking it. Okay, there's a difference. Um, Freaking segment! Holy crap! I'm deaf. Holy crap! I'm deaf. Where you you're from Chicago? You're from Chicago. Whatever. You're you whatever. Anyway, we're in the midst, middle, and or near the end of our Ricky Rocket from Poison interview. You're in the midst, middle, or end of it. You're the end of it. Ricky Rocket, uh, the uh, the guy who keeps the the rhythm, the backbone, the backbeat, the the heart of. Uh, Poison, one of the uh, rock and roll bands from the 90s that is still around today. You still know? releasing new records. Guy, guy's been pounding on the skins for 20, 20 years or so. And, uh, you know, he's uh, unique in a way. You know, he's got his own little <laughs> style. What? He's unique in a way? Yeah. Isn't everyone unique in a way? No, some people are just carbon copies. You know, but Ricky, you know... Oh, it's just pretty cool that, you know, they're still big today. They're still packing the arenas, yet they still take the time for people like this jackass. What the hell, dude? What is your problem? I'm in the middle of something. So was I. Go ahead, your majesty. Just wanted to say a compliment, a nice compliment about our you never special me. guest. Because oh. you're not our special guest. Right. Shows about him. Go ahead. You go ahead. You wanted to go ahead. Do you want it? Okay. Oh, well, we still have at least one or two viewers left. Why don't we get back to an actual entertaining part of the show, which is our interview with Ricky Rackett. Rocket. 
Yeah. Staying alive. Staying alive. Ricky Rocket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on. Stay alive. Satellite of love. Jazz. What? Satellite of love? Yes. Rocket. It's a rocket, so it's satellite. Rocket, satellite. That's you get dumb. It? You're dumb. Living like a bomb, baby. Come on, get it on. Living like a loving like hey, a red eye. That's another show. Looking like a tramp, like a video. Bam. Demolition woman, let me be your man. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, your martial arts background because you know it's something that, that we've heard a lot about and um, it's always interesting to hear kind of that other yeah. side of um, well I mean I took karate as a kid you know and I and then uh, uh, the school closed down because the instructor got arrested um, <laughs> <laughs> for, for fraud and uh, and then uh, I took kung fu as a kid and then you know and then I just got interested in drums and well I had been interested in drums but and then I just didn't really think about it a lot much at all until probably um, the early 90s and Brett and I started working with a guy named Mark DeCoscos who uh, did a lot of kickboxing and some of the Filipino stuff and then um, you know but that was only a very in a very limited way and then I got interested in uh, trying to find the, the Bruce Lee stuff. That was what it excited me anyway. So I found an instructor that was actually third generation. And I did that for five years. And, uh, and then I discovered this other thing called Silat, which is from Indonesia. It's a ground fighting stuff. And I had wrestled in school, so I like the ground fighting stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, a guy invited me over to the Machado Brothers School which is Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And I said, you know, I'll kill those guys. <laughs> and I went over and they mopped me up with the floor, basically, about 15 times in a row. And uh, I was so embarrassed, I walked out of there with my tail between my legs, and the next day I came in and signed up. And I said, you know, I don't, I've been putting my head in the ground for a long time because I wasn't facing what, what, what could work. And so that was 14 years ago. And now I'm a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I just stuck with it. It was the only. Th it's for a while I did some kickboxing with it, and and then did their classes. And then I just went over and just went very deeply into that. And now I'm doing some boxing with Boo Boo Mancini and some of the other guys that train there. And um, so it's great. You know, I'm getting. I wish I would have done this at 22 years old. You know, and you know then I. But uh, you know I'm I'm too. I don't want to say I'm too old to compete. I'm not too old to compete. And I might, I might like if, if I don't have a tour close to, to it, to a tournament, I would do it. Um, and so I might if I have the the ability to do it. I've had two tournaments where I was slated to do, and I got injured both times going into it. Uh, for yeah, it. training for it, and uh, I think I just went overboard. You know, one time I broke my nose, and which you don't have to have a nose to to do it, but. Um, but it was close to it, and I could have opened it up back back up again. And so I thought it wasn't a good idea. And uh, the other time, I tweaked my knee with a leg lock, and I popped it out of joint. So for three months, that that wouldn't be good. If I was going on a tour, I'd send everybody home. So you know, so I can't do it. So I just do it to do it. Now, I mean, throughout the years, has it ever have you ever had any situations, you know, in a, in a bar and you know, out in public, or whatever, where there was a conversation or something happened that you've had to kind of rely on that background? Less, less after I've learned stuff, mm -hmm. believe it or not. Um, it seemed like I always got into stuff uh, before I knew anything. Before I knew how to fight, I was always in fights. Mm -hmm. After I learned how to fight, I get in very few altercations or even really close. I think I, think I know... I, th I think I look at a situation and go, "This is this isn't going to be good if it if it happens." You know what I mean? It's it, it, for either person. I don't really like to hurt people. It's not in my nature. I'm not wired like that. So I don't look to to hurt people. You know, and if I fight out of anger, I know that it's it's not really how I was taught how to deal with things. You know what I mean? How to to get mad and fight somebody. You know what I mean? That's not. So I've managed to always avert somehow, and you know, invariably it'll it'll happen. I mean, I just said something to Joe Elliott, right? You know, 
which is pretty funny, really. So, um, but uh, I don't think that's ever going to. But you know, it could be kind of fun if I could bring him onto a mat. You know what I mean? I wouldn't hurt Joe too bad. I just, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just choke him out a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Hey, John, how do you like this <laughs> he might even like it. He might even go, hey, you know. I mean, that's what happened to me. I got tapped out 15 times the first time I went to the Machado Brothers School. I kept coming after him. I'm like, no, 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 this didn't happen. I said, yes, it did. <laughs> And there it is again. Yeah. Skunk in the middle of the road. You're a dead skunk in the middle of the road. What were you playing, dude? I was playing home, the song we opened up oh, the that's show. Oh, I started with. singing, yeah. and then you stopped. Because you stopped. I, I clearly started singing the song, and then he stopped playing. You guys all, well, you, uh, nobody saw it. Hey, we need to take this time uh, to thank uh, the guy who made this interview possible. That is uh, tour manager Larry, Poison's tour manager. Uh, he's from uh, Chicago. Saw our show a couple times. And then still <laughs> set us up with his clients. Although so, after your performance today, probably know, not again. I don't really call them clients. They're more like, I guess, co-workers or whatever. But so thanks. His band? Thanks, yeah, his band. So thanks to Larry for uh, getting that done. And, uh, you know, once again, had a, had a great time. Ricky was cool. You know, as was uh, you know everybody else in the band that we had met uh, um, prior to and, and after that, except for Don Dawkin. And you know, and if we don't see you guys again after that because you watched our show, we would understand. You know, because I'm just trying to have fun, man. So <laughs> it's nothing but a good time for me. So as you know, every rose has its thorn. So just like this show. So if you're you want just me, like this show, if you want me to go home, I'll go home now. Until then, that's pretty good. Wasn't it? Ride the wind. Sorry to go off track there. It's I know that's such a. That's such a. You're what the. F I know that's something we don't do a lot is you know go off on tangents here on this show. But um, Don Dockin and his big fat head walked into our, the middle of our Skid Row or our Sebastian Bach interview. No, he's not in Skid Row anymore, dude. Yeah. So that's where that came from. Just so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a in joke. It's a recurring one of those jokes that you know it's happens. Only from, funny to um, one or the two episode of us. to episode. You know, so like let's say you watch like Scrubs and they bring up a, a joke that they did you know a couple years ago or a couple episodes ago. You know, those that, who pay attention. It's like an Easter egg. It's like a hidden thing. It's like you know, an in joke for those who are in. Except I think the important part here is a joke. Yeah, it works on Scrubs. Well, Don Dockin. Don Dockin is a joke. He's truly a joke. In fact, we Dockin means joke in, uh, in Japakin. It means joke. What if they're friends with Don Dockin? Who? And you just insulted their friend. I didn't insult their friend. You just said he's a joke. No, I said that's what it means. It's a, it's a, it was a joke. Well, what? What's going on? He, he interrupted our interview. Wasn't very nice of him. I'm sure he's a sweet guy. Oh, why don't we get back to something that's actually entertaining? I like Ricky Rocket. I like CC Deville. I like Brett Michaels. I like Bobby Dahl. I like Larry, the tour manager. I like Poison. Oh, she got 
Um, going back to the covers album, just give give us a little insight about um, you know how you guys chose the songs and, and um, maybe a couple of them that are were your favorite to play or to try. Well, it was definitely a collaborative argument. Um, we we the way we did it was we said let's be really fair. Let's each pick five songs. We'll narrow it down, and if each guy gets two, then we got a record, right? Well, that went out the window the first day. It was like, no, your selections suck. <laughs> Let's do it like all my ideas. And, uh, but we just went, you know, what we had to do was play a lot of these songs. We learned probably 30 songs. And, uh, you know, I swear to God, in the middle of the rehearsals for this thing, we could have gone out and done three hours of covers easily at a bar. And I thought, wouldn't that be cool for Poison to go out and just do a bunch of cover songs at a bar somewhere? for a couple nights, you know, because we knew like 30 songs, you know, but we'd try them and some, some of them just didn't work. It just wasn't better. We tried The Clash, for example, and there's, you can't make The Clash better. It, the Clash is The Clash, for example. We could play the chords, we could sing the lyrics, we could play the beats, but it just wasn't, it, you know, there's certain things that just didn't work. Um, and some stuff you just, you know, we're done so well the first time, it's kind of like, it's kind of like when they remake some of these films, and it's like, well, why'd you do that? That was great, it's fine the way it is. Why remake Bonnie and Clyde? I mean, you're gonna get better than Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway, I mean. You know, and that's the same way with some music, and some stuff you can add a, your own thing to and change it a little bit, and we're not trying to be better than Tom Petty, for example, we gave it a different spin. Some stuff you give it a different spin, and all of a sudden the song isn't the same song anymore, you know, and it just doesn't work at all. So you just have to try it, you know, and that's how we came up with those songs. Some of them was like, I, we never thought in a million years what I like about you would wind up on the record. You know, we thought, ah, we'll try it, it's a throwaway, it'll, you know, and for some reason it just worked with Poison, you know, and we're like, oh, okay, this is a winner for us. Isn't Three Guys Picking the greatest show ever? It's the greatest show ever. I am so blown away with him and him. <laughs> well, we thank you for your time. And thank uh, you very much. Is there anything you want to add? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for, uh, for joining us. Right on. Oh, shit, you. yes, and it's a long sleeve. And then, uh, just in case you haven't seen enough of Brad on TV, we've got the episode where um, we interviewed a couple years back. Oh, awesome.